Today on Maker's Muse, we're reviewing the biggest 3D printer I have ever tested. The Raze N2 Plus. Let's get started. Welcome back to Maker's Muse, guys. My name is Angus, and this is my official review of the Raze N2 Plus. This machine is absolutely enormous. It has a print volume of 305 by 305 by 610 millimeters in the Z. The machine itself weighs over 60 kilograms and I have a video on my Patreon of me trying to get this thing into this room. It comes on casters and it was an absolute nightmare, which is why it lives in the cupboard. So what do I think of this 3D printer? Well, let's talk about specs first. I just mentioned the build volume it does have a heated bed and this particular model has the dual extruders running 1.75 millimeter filament through direct drive extruders. It is fully enclosed, which is really nice. It has this really nice looking acrylic top, which keeps the heat in, the bed is heated, and the whole machine can maintain quite a high ambient temperature if you do want to do so. It also has a nice door on the front and side to access filament where you can load not just one, but two one kilo or larger rolls of plastic. And let me tell you, you'll be needing to do so. More on that in a bit. It does come stock from the factory with 0.4 millimeter nozzles, but I quickly found they were very small and made printing on such a large machine very tedious, which is why you may have seen my printing video using a one millimeter nozzle on the Raze N2 Plus. I've since settled down on a 0.6, which is what most of these prints have been printed on. The construction of the Raze N2 Plus is extremely high quality, made from sheet metal, and acrylic parts, there's only a few 3D printed pieces which pretty much serve to guide filament into the extruder. They're more of an aftermarket thing they thought of. I think a community member designed them and they just put them into the kit. But apart from that, everything's extremely high quality. There's no dodginess there. And also the movement axes are beautiful. I haven't seen a machine with dual ball screws on the Z for a very long time. And the Raze N2 Plus has that, which is really cool to see. It's extremely rigid. You'd expect that from a machine that weighs 60 plus kilograms. But the main feature that the Raze 3D printers were sort of touting when they came out a few years ago was the interface. You don't have a, a sort of single color LCD or even a multi-color LCD. You have a fully featured tablet built into this machine where you can load up your files via USB stick and you can see them in real time getting printed. If the printer loses power, you can resume and it works really, really well. My one maybe main complaint of this is it does take a while to start up. If you're trying to get printing quickly, the tablet does need to boot, which can take a bit of time when you turn the machine on. And for some reason, this, this USB stick always corrupts itself when I put it back in the computer, probably because when I pull the power on this, this tablet just shuts down. I'm not quite sure. Nothing gets lost, but it does say there is errors on the USB, but still a V. So when you're printing on a machine of this immense size, Print times start to take a while. You might be used to a 12 hour print maybe, or maybe a 24 hour print. 24 hours on this machine is like nothing. With a print volume, as I said, of 610 high, you're looking at 25, 50, 100 hour print times using the stock hardware on the Raze NG Plus, which is ridiculously long. So with a print time that long, you wanna make sure that machine is actually quiet in operation so it doesn't drive you nuts and reliable. Well, I can happily say that the machine is very quiet during operation. In Rapids, it does make a bit of noise, but this is one of the few machines I have in this workshop that I can actually run overnight. The other machines I have do tend to keep me up in the other rooms. I'm very, very light sleeper. But this machine, especially in the cupboard, I can run for as long as I want. I just come back to it and hopefully come back to a finished print. Hopefully. Let me go into a few of the things that I think the Raze N2 Plus could do better. Bed leveling and nozzle height. So the machine comes from the factory pre-leveled. And that's kind of good because the leveling system on the Raze N2 Plus, quite frankly, sucks. If you look at the bottom of the bed, it has a glass platform which with build tack and that sits on an aluminium plate. There is a network of grub screws and various adjustment points. There's not four or three, there's loads. And you need to adjust all of them to make the bed level. 
from the factory, this, this one is pretty close, but it's not perfect. The back is further away than the front, or rather the front is further away than the back. Either way, it's not level front to back. So basically that means during printing, you suffer the most frustrating of print failures. You have a print that attaches enough to start and then halfway through it catches and breaks off. And you end up with failures like this. Now when a 3D print fails, it's usually not such a big deal, but when a 3D print that's been going for 24 hours fails, you can smash through kilos of filament in failures and it's extremely frustrating. This was done on the original 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but I do have failures when I was using the one millimeter and I also have failures when I was using the 0.6. You might notice it's just the head of a cat. I printed the body of it, but this support structure broke away maybe 25 hours or maybe more into the print from the bottom, which means when it got to the head, it would have just failed because that head needs to support. So I printed this separately. But the bed level is just one thing. The screw for adjusting the nozzle height is also extremely frustrating. You do it by homing a micro switch to an adjustable screw and then you have to kind of guess after homing if it's close enough or too close or too far away and it's trial and error. You go back and forth, back and forth and that screw vibrates during operation. It does slowly move. So every time you rehome the machine, you're kind of changing that nozzle height, which as I said, is exceedingly critical for large prints to stop them falling over. I have resorted to using glue sticks and various other methods on top of the build tack to give it a best chance scenario of succeeding but really this whole bed level and nozzle height system needs to be thrown in the bin and re revamped, re-engineered with a touch probe or induction probe system like you see on the Prusa i3 to make sure that you get that level perfect before you kick off a 100 hour print. Okay, that's the first complaint. Second complaint, dual nozzle systems that are in line. Very quickly early on, you guys will have noticed that I quickly removed that second extruder nozzle. That's because I don't care too much for dual color printing, nor do I care for dual material printing in a system like this. I only want to use this machine for big, badass 3D prints. Like this. The Raze N2 Plus smashes out massive 3D prints like this Deathclaw head printed in PLA plastic from X3D. Guess how much plastic's in this? That's the remainder of the roll. There's almost a kilo of plastic in this print. So you can see why I wouldn't really care about dual color printing when this print is not even close to the max volume and it's got a kilo of plastic in it. It doesn't seem to fit the design intent of this printer. So using this machine with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and a second nozzle removed, I've been getting some really good results off it, but I wouldn't care to try to print dual in line because dual extruders rub against each other when they're designed like that. So the, the Ultimaker 3 raises the other one out of the way. <laughs> Raise. In terms of print quality on this machine now, now I've added the 0.6 millimeter nozzle and fine tuned it, I'm getting some amazing results, I'll be honest. The machine is extremely rigid and its print quality is phenomenal. I've been using Idea Maker for all of these prints, which is the software made by Raise for their printers, but I did feature it in a recent video on how you can use it on other machines. It's really good. It has customizable support structures and you can do kind of things like this support structure where it inter interlocks at 90 degree angles. So you get a stronger column. This is uh, definitely risky though, because it means it's very hard to remove. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so you can remove it, but uh, in the case of the death claw, some of that's pretty much welded. But you can do custom supports, which is nice, and it is free if you want to try it out. But the print quality is phenomenal. I'm printing this at, you know, 0.4 millimeter layer height, like really coarse. So do not really expect to get this machine. I don't think anyone would get this machine to print small, high detail objects. You'd be getting this machine to print massive things. Okay, so full conclusion. At a price of around three and a half thousand dollars US plus shipping, and the shipping will be immense because the machine's so huge and heavy, who should buy this machine? Well, I think this is a perfect printer for prop makers. The bed leveling does suck and does need massive improvements as I would li also like to see a filament outage detection sensor. As I said, one kilo of filament doesn't go far on this printer. So if it runs out currently, it just keeps trying to print, which is gonna be pretty frustrating if you come back to a 100 hour print and find it air printing. But if they can iron out those small problems, and they are small problems, the machines uh, engineered well, it's got the mechanics there. 
If they can iron that out, this machine is going to be a surefire bet for anyone in the prop making industry because you can print massive things in PLA. PLA is quite cheap now and finish it very easily. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video on the Raze N2 Plus. I've been having a blast printing on this machine. It prints fantastically and I will probably do the mods I've mentioned myself to it just so I can make sure it's a little bit more reliable in terms of getting those prints to stick every time. And if you want to buy one of these machines, I'll put links in the video description. I also have a link to an Australian reseller. I think Bilby 3D is selling it now. So there'll be links there to the international and Australian resellers. And if you enjoyed this video, guys, and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews on Makers Muse, please subscribe. I would love to have you jump on board. And also hit that bell icon. I've been told that if you don't do it now, you don't know when I upload a video because YouTube's dumb like that. So I'd love you to, to bell that icon as well. It would help me out a lot. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.